So you like USB ports, do you? Well, how about eight of them? That's what the Geekom GT1 Mega would say, if it could talk. I believe eight is a new record for a mini this size. So lock it in, Guinness. What else is on offer? Quite a lot, actually. Here we have an ASUS NUC alternative that does things differently and brings something new to the table, which is important as the ever-growing line of minis become swamped with releases from every direction. How many minis have I reviewed this year again? But before we look at the unique features of Geekom's GT1 Mega, here's a short message. Sometimes you need to record your screen and EaseUS Rec Experts makes it easy. It even has a basic video editor to help you cut out the unimportant parts. Whether you're a gamer or just need to share something from your screen with friends and colleagues, check out EaseUS Rec Experts in the video description. The GT1 Mega is a bit bigger than the previous generation minis we've looked at from Geekom, which is a good thing actually, considering what this one's packing inside, it's a very sleek metal case. Mmm, solid. This model has Intel's Core Ultra 9 185H, 16 cores, 22 threads, and AI. I know you love that AI. Oh, and Intel's Arc Graphics handles iGPU duties. The GT1 Mega comes in at $989 US dollars for the 2TB SSD 32GB RAM configuration. Geekom also provided me with a 6% off coupon for my viewers, bringing it down to just under $930. One direct competitor with the same CPU we have looked at previously is the ASUS NUC 14 Pro Plus. However, there are a few things the GT1 Mega does better, such as including a full-size SD card reader on the side which is great for a video editing workstation and is something this mini excels at. It's also first in this form factor to come across my desk with four USB Type-A ports on the front. Very useful. I'm always keen to plug things into USB A holes and all of them are 10 gigabit. Something that is missing in the ASUS NUC 14 Pro Plus is Wi-Fi 7, which is thankfully included here. There's also an audio jack. The back features dual USB 4 ports another USB 3 10 gigabit, and a USB 2. So, I count 8. Hurry up, Guinness. I see people have been requesting Geekom add dual LAN, and here it is, making its debut. Both are Intel 2.5 gigabit. For displays, there's dual HDMI 2.0, which tops out at 4K60. If you need more bandwidth for your displays, you can use the USB 4 ports, which top out at 8K, and together with HDMI, allow for 4 displays. The USB 4 port with a power plug icon also supports being powered by USB-C and has display out at the same time. It worked fine with my USB-C monitor and is also something previous Geekom units didn't support. Along with the mini PC, there's a compact 120 watt power supply, HDMI, there's a mount and screws. Let's open it up. Oh, glued on rubber feet. My arch nemesis is back. Once you do pull them off, four screws, and then you'll need something small and thin to pry open the lid, like a screwdriver. Yes, you're right. I suppose I could have used my other thin and small tool as well. <laughs> you know. <laughs> the metal plate helps to transfer the heat off the SSD. A few more screws, and there's not enough slack on the Wi-Fi cables. I'll just move the plate sideways. Underneath the included 2TB Gen 4 SSD is the M.2 Wi-Fi 7 card and the DDR5-5600 memory doesn't have any cooling. So we'll have to see how it holds up later. For additional storage, there's a 2242 M.2 slot supporting Gen 3 NVMe or SATA. Windows 11 Pro is pre-installed. No malware was found on this mini. The latest Ubuntu as of this video didn't have any audio options, so there was no sound output when testing the OS off the USB stick. Otherwise, everything else seemed to work fine. Since the ASUS NUC 14 Pro Plus is a direct competitor, I thought we'd compare it in the benchmarks. In single core Cinebench, the GT1 Mega is slightly behind, 4% against the best result. Multi-core Cinebench shows a drop of 17% at the default power mode, and only 8% when both minis are set to their higher performance profile in the BIOS. Geekbench single core shows little difference between the two and Multicore has a much smaller win for the ASUS NUC 14 Pro Plus. The video encoding benchmark shows a bigger margin at the default power profile, but the performance mode helps to even things out. You can see the GT1 Mega has dropped down the list at its default power mode 
and shoots up with performance mode enabled. 3D Mark is only a good metric comparing Intel integrated graphics against each other, as Intel optimizes for the graphics benchmarks, while in reality, the iGPU performs much worse. Anyway, Geekom's GT1 Mega surpasses the ASUS SNARK by a small margin of less than 2%. Same in Time Spy. And in Steel Nomad. This could be due to newer drivers or the RAM included. Long-time viewers of the channel will know Arc Graphics can at best challenge AMD's Radeon 680M found in the top 6000 series CPUs, but you're probably interested in how Arc compares against AMD's latest 890M found in Strix Point Minis. Let's start with the eSports games, which rely heavily on the CPU. Geekcom's GT1 Mega with a Core Ultra 9 185H falls in between the two AMD Minis, except for the 1% lows. A similar result in League of Legends, but this time does much better on the 1%. The Valorant benchmark, it keeps up with AMD's Strix point, no problem. Spike planted. Now it's back to being in the middle. So those are the CPU heavy games. Let's switch to GPU heavy. Arc Graphics is close to 680M in Forza Horizon 5, with AMD's latest, far far ahead. Ghost of Sushi, or is that Sashimi, favours the AMD integrated graphics. while Arc is again close to the 680M in Cyberpunk. It even has a slight win with Robocop. It also comes out ahead in the Hellblade 2 test against the 680M Mini Tested. You should not have come here, child. This dark land pushes back. But it does really poorly in God of War Ragnarok. Another decent result in Space Marine 2. So it's a mixed bag. Intel CPUs do well in emulation, and the GT1 Mega matches Strix Point for the SEMU emulation test. Also a pretty good result with a PS3 emulator, though MD's latest is ahead by a nice margin. Those wanting to pair an eGPU with Geekom's GT1 Mega can use the USB 4 port, although you're limited to 40 gigabits per second bandwidth. Here's my eGPU dock with an RTX 3070.
latency mon tests for any issues you could have during audio production, and unsurprisingly, this very powerful mini passes the test, even with Cinebench running in the background. I'm glad Geekom included a full-size SD card reader, as this mini makes a very good video editing workstation. Intel's hardware video decoding is in a league of its own, and will give you the best video editing experience in Premiere. As we already saw in the benchmarks, exporting while using performance mode gives you one of the higher results of the minis currently available. To enable performance mode, mash the delete key on startup until you see the BIOS screen. All the interesting options are found on the main screen. Power mode is where you can set the performance profile. This mini also includes Wake on LAN, AC power loss, and S5 RTC settings. Geekom includes one of the faster Gen 4 SSDs I've tested so far, and its maximum temp held up okay with the thrash test. Bluetooth range was below average when tested with a Bluetooth audio speaker. However, it did well with a Wi-Fi test at 12 meters or 39 feet using the 5G band. No network connection or ping issues for the whole eSports game test were reported. Idle power draw is almost the same as the SUS NUC 14 Pro Plus and one of the lower results. Maximum power draw is thankfully not as high with similar performance. Very inefficient to push this CPU any further. This mini CPU gets hot. It's almost as high as the SUS NUC with both performance modes. Unfortunately, fan noise is a weak point. While it's very quiet at idle, you'll definitely notice the fan noise as soon as the mini starts doing tasks with higher performance requirements. And the performance mode in the BIOS shoots the fan noise up even higher. If you're wondering how the size of the mini compares to others on the market, Here's the volume chart. The final test is to check if the DDR5 memory overheats since it doesn't have active cooling. And after leaving it for over 30 minutes, the frame rate was unchanged. The highest temp recorded was around 68C on the bottom stick. Okay, so pros and cons. Geekom's GT1 Mega Mini PC comes with eight USB ports, the most yet. Wi-Fi 7 is included, which was missing from the ASUS NUC as was the SD card reader, which is a very useful inclusion for video editing or even as an additional storage drive. Not many mini PCs offer a 2TB storage option and the GT1 Mega stands out there as well. Although, you're definitely paying for it. While the price is competitive comparing to an ASUS NUC 14 Pro Plus, we have to look at the wider competition and this mini comes in at AMD's latest Strix Point pricing which has performance advantages outside of video editing as we've seen in the benchmarks. The GT1 Mega does come with double the storage, so keep that in mind. Fan noise is not its strength either. It's acceptable using balance mode, but gets annoying on the performance profile. This mini also runs hot, but that's been the case with every top tier Intel generation in this form factor for a while now. So it's not unexpected. Overall, Geekom's GT1 Mega improves a lot over the previous generation units. It does something different, and thanks to its SD card reader and plenty of USB, makes for a great video editing workstation. Along with Wi-Fi 7, it has the features that were missing on the ASUS NUC 14 Pro Plus, and provides some real competition. So, that's Geekom's GT1 Mega Mini PC. Oh, and if you don't need the latest and greatest, the previous generation flagship GT13 Pro review can be found right here. Cheers!